Hello, my name is Anya, and today we are going to create an intuitive search box that allows for misspellings using the Fuzzy Search and Autocomplete plugin. So if you've watched my video on how to create a search box in Bubble or have ever made one yourself, you would know that search boxes tend to be very literal and spelling needs to match up exactly for things to be correctly filtered. But if we want our search box to be more intuitive and to be able to tolerate a certain degree of misspellings, we need to use the Fuzzy Search plugin, which I'll get into in this video. But to start, we are going to put some data into the database so that we can test the functionality of our search box. I made a thing of type bird and I gave it a name, which is just a text field. Now directly into the database, I added values like so. I just gave it a name and created. These are values that we can test with to see how well our search box is filtering. Now let's set up a repeating group to display these. I'm going to make it of type bird and the data source is just going to be a search for all of the birds in the database. I'm going to make sure there isn't a fixed number of rows and I'm going to give it a text field within each cell that will display the current cell's bird's name. If we preview this, we can see that it works as expected and we can see all of the birds. Now to set up the search box, I'm going to just add an input box and I'm going to call it input search. Now we need to install the plugin that will make this whole thing work. We're going to be using the fuzzy search and autocomplete plugin, which is completely free to use. Now that we've installed it, we just need it to live somewhere on the page. It's not seen, but it affects the functionality of the rest of the elements. We are going to make the data type bird, which is the type of items in this repeating group that we want to filter through. And the data source is going to be everything in the repeating group. Sorry, the data source is going to be a search for all of the birds in the database, which is the same data source as this repeating group has. Now we are searching for the name of the bird. So that's what this field is. This is also very important. We need to set the text to match from an input box and we're just going to check that box. Now, in order to connect all three of these elements, we need to make sure we have a box in the settings checked. We are going to go to general and scroll all the way down to advanced options where we see expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. And we are just going to check that box like so. Now that it's checked, at the bottom of input search, we can see this ID attribute, and we can just give it an attribute. Let's call it search box. This ID attribute, which is going to copy it, is also going to be added onto this fuzzy search plugin. Not over here, but over here in the input box ID. This is going to connect two of them. And it's going to allow this to read the value inside the input box. Now we're going to go here and we're going to give it a conditional. We're going to say that when the input searches value, number of characters, not is, but is greater than or equal to two, we want to change the data source. Because we are using a middleman, if we directly make the data source, if we directly make the data source the search and autocorrects matches, then when there is no value in the input, nothing will show up in the repeating group. To prevent this from happening, we need to use this approach, which just makes sure that there is something substantial in the input box before it starts filtering using this method. Now, if we test this out, we can see that when we search for something like bird, 
but accidentally misspell, we still see bluebird and hummingbird come up, which is exactly what we want to happen. Good job, guys.